Alrighty, gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. We have had opening weekend done with football. Um, we're going to kind of go through and do these when we can, when they make sense. I appreciate all you guys supporting the channel. Just kind of giving some thoughts and takes. Guys, as always, get all your comments down below. Let me know what you guys are thinking about some of these. Um, I picked out a couple matches just to talk about. It's the opening weekend, really, where we have football back. And uh, we're going to talk about some stuff. So we're going to get right into it. If you guys are new to the channel, drop a sub. Glad you guys are enjoying the content. We're kind of doing a little bit of everything. Some reactions, some discussions, all that. Um, appreciate all the support. So Xerxes with United on Friday, you know, really saves them in the end. I felt like United, though, I did like the way they played. They created a lot of chances. They kind of had that problem where you're wondering, you know, last season, obviously, they scored very low total of goals for United standards. Also conceded a ton. Um, you know, hopefully they don't have this finishing dilemma this year. But they got three points. And in the end... All that matters is three points. They started with a really strong start with the three points. Xerxes had a crazy goal at the end. To be honest, they probably should have had the second. I can't believe Garnacho and Rashford. They both sold. I mean, Rashford, the weight of the pass was terrible. Garnacho still, even with the pass, could have scored, and he missed. Uh, he was killing me in fantasy. So, United, nice to see the three points. I uh, wanted to discuss. <clears throat> discuss. <laughs> Sorry about that. Hairball. Um, I wanted to discuss United because I felt like they were worth the mention. Um, Chelsea and City, I did a watch along with this game yesterday on the live stream. You know, my takeaways from this game overall, I still just with Chelsea, I, I it's 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 interesting. They just have so many players. I don't I don't know. I, I like the lineup they went out there with. Um I thought Enzo looked so rusty. And I tweeted about this with Chelsea. Jackson to me is such a frustrating player because I think he is overhated. His runs that he makes the positioning that he offers is incredible. Seriously, I mean, he's always in the right spot. His just decision-making is so poor. I was really disappointed with Nkunku as well. I know he's kind of still getting back up to speed. He had that injury for a year. I mean, but this was a guy who was a top-10 player in the world, uh, you know, before the injury. And I was disappointed. I, I hate when players overcomplicate things. He had a beautiful play where Jackson held the ball up so well. Even top strikers can't hold that up that well. I mean, he turned the defender. He played the ball out. Palmer played a perfect pass. Palmer, look, people will say Palmer was a ghost yesterday. Palmer did what he was going to do, right? That's what Palmer does. His passes were good. He was in the right spots. And then they do that whole play, and Nkunku decides to not shoot the wide-open shot on his left. Ederson wasn't really tested all game. De Bruyne, I thought, you know, looks a little bit like we're noticing he's a little older now. Haaland just looks crazy. I mean, he looks – I mean, he. I tweeted something funny about the Cucurella thing because Cucurella was singing the song about Haaland, and Haaland just laughed at him when he was laying on the floor and he wanted a foul. So Haaland is business, um, and I thought – I thought Savio looked pretty good, um, you know, into the team. Hopefully his injury is nothing uh, too long-term. I think really with City, the question mark is that how, when will Rodri be back? And, you know, um, can they can they sustain the consistency over the length of the season? I mean, they look great, though. They, they look like they always do. I will say this, though, just as a final thought about this game. I don't think Chelsea was that far off of City. You know, the 2-0 score I don't really think shows at all. There was a time from, like, the second half starts about minute 60-70 that Chelsea just were in control and City were kind of just like, okay, you can have the ball. Um, and Chelsea just couldn't convert. They definitely had their fair share of chances. Would like to see them convert. Was really disappointed by all the players that came in. Neto, Mark, Renato, Dewsbury Hall. I felt like when they made those changes, they played way worse. I know that Jackson and Nkunku were not really putting the ball away, but they, I thought, just thought they looked worse once they made the subs. There was a lack of passion and care and really City just saw out the match. So that game, no surprises there. It's not, it's not a... Um, it's not like a red flag warning with Chelsea yet because, you know, obviously you're not expected to beat City. Chelsea just bringing in Felix today. I was going to make a video on that. I think, you know, it's another player they're signing. They have so many players. So it'll be interesting to see how Felix, you know, sorts into all this in this team. Um, but, yeah, they, they have Felix coming into the club. And uh, I think City are looking really good to win the Prem again uh, this year. Arsenal got three points. I want to talk a little bit about this Mallorca-Madrid game. Uh, because I watched this game yesterday, and and I have to say, I was really disappointed with Madrid. I thought, you know, I don't know what statistically this game shows. It's interesting to see the stats. Yeah, Mallorca with one XG and Madrid with 0.6. It's one of those where, yeah, Madrid had most of the ball, but obviously, you know, you're a team like Mallorca, you're going to let Madrid have the ball, right? That's the part of it. And I just felt like in the second half, this game got so away from Madrid. Um, I, I don't know. I was really, really not impressed with what I saw from Real Madrid. And this is going to be the issue with Madrid. And this is going to be the issue with some of these God squads. All right. There needs to be a level of importance and care in these matches, right? Sometimes when you assemble some of these all-star teams, these teams with high ego players, you, you lack the players that you need in the team that are really the, the nucleus, the, the passion, right? And so 
that's going to be their issue. I, I felt like just even from watching the match yesterday that Tony Cruz is evidently very missing in this team. You can have a midfield of Jude Bellingham, Chuameni, Valverde, Modric off the bench. You know, Kamavinga, unfortunately, injured, right? But he was playing left back for most of the time last year anyways. Um, you know, I think I think it's uh, they're missing that, right? They're missing that ability of the control in the midfield. We look at Madrid last season and how so many of their goals came from this they played a ball to Vinny. Vinny tucks it back to Cruz. It's a it's a diagonal across to the right side, and then they go. So we'll have to see. I mean, obviously, Jude has excellent work rate. It reminded me some of the times watching PSG with Mbappe, Neymar, and Messi. And when they lost the ball, those three would just sit out on the counter. Now, obviously, the risk is worth it because those three on the counter will cook anybody. But, you know, is it one of those where it's more effective to have somebody tucking in? That's the question mark with this team. I thought defensively they looked okay. Um, you know, I thought there was a lot of chances, though. I, I'm going to say this, though. I'm not going to go too crazy with Madrid. They'll figure it out. It's going to take time. Just not impressive to start, you know, the league performance off, dropping points already. And Barca did a good job to get three points over the weekend. But I want to give cru uh, credit and kudos to Mallorca because Mojica, even in Copa America, was phenomenal. I mean, he was great yesterday. They were really good. Moriki, the striker, is phenomenal. If you haven't seen this guy play, watch him. It was like my second time seeing him play. I was really impressed with him. Um, he was given, I think Rudy's the best center back in the world. He was giving him and Militao a really, really, really tough time. The frustrating part overall about the game plan with Madrid was like, it was just so weird to see it. Like, I like Mbappe more out on the left, but you got to play Vinny out on the left. You can't not play Vinny there. So it's one of those where Mbappe's going to get less touches in the nine spot. And it's one of those where, like, we're wa I'm watching this game, and, like, literally, they just put the whole team on the left side, and Carvajal's crossing a ball in. It's, it's, there's not much organization. There's not as much flow as the Madrid I lost, la the Madrid I watched last year, but it's going to take time for Madrid to get to where they were uh, previously. Let's not, let's not, um, you know, discount how incredible they were at the end of the season. And they could bring in Mbappe, and they could have all these players. Uh, let's not get too reactionary. It's pretty early on. It's crazy how. This, this squad has Arda Guler, Brahim Diaz, Vasquez coming in in minute 87. I wanted to see those changes a little bit earlier because I felt like Madrid weren't really doing anything um, at the end. Vinny skied a shot. He did have an assist. Um, yeah, overall, Entrick no playing time. We still haven't seen him play. So uh, that game is that game. Credit to Mallorca. Uh, let's talk a little bit about this game real quick. Uh, Villa, I think this is a really good result for them. I mean, early goal, concede a pen, and then late goal, and they get three points. I, I, Villa's a team I have um, finishing pretty high this season. I have them playing finishing six, which, look, they did really well last season. They may do better than that. Um, I just think it's still high because they're going to have European football as well, and that's going to add a lot. But Emery is the guy. He's experienced for that. Um, you know, he's up for that. Onana looking really sharp. I thought he looked really good, uh, really good at the Euro. He's looking really sharp, 23 years old, so looking very good. Um, other than that, Newcastle, in my opinion, this was a really good showing from them. Uh, you know, they got that early red card. I thought the call was terrible, uh, but I think it's a really good showing, man, that they come out with this one nothing win. They hold on defensively. They're looking really sharp. I think it was two seasons ago or like the start of last season. Defensively, these guys were nuts. Isak looking really good for a lot of uh, goal contributions this season. I've got him on my fantasy team. So really, really, really nice look from Newcastle. Um, I think I want to talk about this Barcelona game for a second because Lewandowski with two goals. I mean, wow, right? Lewandowski with two goals. So Valencia scores on the 44th. Lewandowski gets a goal after that, and then he gets another goal. So Lewa still at his age, balling out. Right, an 8.7. They got Rafinha. This is how they're lining up right now. They got Rafinha at the 10. Yamal is going out wide. Um, still, Barca dealing with some injuries, man. So, for them to get three points here, obviously, obviously, you know, it is massive. They have they have a lot of players, right, that are not available. Look at the players they have that are not able to play right now. Frankie de Jong, Araujo. Um, you know, Danny Olmo still is not going to be there with the transfer and personal reasons till September. And Gabi is still out for a little bit. So, they are missing... A lot of players, right? Uh, you you know, we could even we could even go as far and obviously say Pedri as well. So obviously he comes in in the 64th. He he's still coming back and getting fit. So he will be starting soon, obviously. But um, nice to see Barca get three points. I think this is a really good result for them. Obviously Madrid dropping points too. It's a really long season, um, but every opportunity you can get, especially when Atletico, who's in the 75th minute right now, uh, is at a 2-2 and Madrid dropped points early. This is huge. And they got to slowly get those players back from injury. Let's see what Danny Olmo can offer them uh, this season. Was not impressed by Ferran Torres at all, man. He was really poor uh, in this one. So, um, And then, yeah, going over to Serie A real quick, I got to see both of these games. This was a crazy one, man. Milan 
uh, tied it up. In the end, they brought in Morata this season. And guess what they brought in Morata to do? Score goals, man. And that's what he did in game number one for them. He already scored a goal. He's coming on off the crazy Euro uh, that he had. I Look, people will say statistically he didn't have a crazy Euro. I just thought he offered Spain so much in that team. Uh, played simple. And he's just a reliable striker to have. So I really like that signing. Okafor as well. Um, coming in. They started Jovic in this one. They brought in Morata. They brought in Musa and Okafor, and then Musa and Okafor made that second goal happen. They did not start Teo. So that's the lineup they went with. Um, Leao with a man of the match, according to FootMob. And uh, yeah, saved, uh, saved, saved, a, saved the point. Saved two points in the end by getting a point. Um, well, two point that doesn't make sense they, they got a point in the end right let's just say that so Torino with a really good start in that one and then you know inter dropping points as well so the situation right now in the Serie A is really interesting because I think Inter and AC Milan are the best two teams but we get in this start here where after match week one right Juventus got three points they won by three goals today and Milan and Inter drop points so we'll see who's going to be the other team this season in the Italian league that is going to challenge um Inter and AC Milan I don't think any team will. Um, you know, Juve gets uh, three points today. And uh, this is the lineup they went with. I, look, I just think over the season, this lineup is not going to be a good enough lineup, uh, you know, to sustain and, and compete with those two teams. Inter Milan was a team last season that I thought, you know, should have done way better in Champions League. It was one of the favorites. And, you know, the previous season, what we had, did we have Inter and AC or we had, yeah, Inter AC semi or something? AC went really far too. So Serie A definitely looking a little bit stronger. Um, and that's going to be my, uh, my recap, guys. You know, Liverpool and Arsenal got really secure wins. I don't really think there was anything to talk about there. Let me know what was your, uh, you know, what was your guy? largest surprise over the weekend um you know who did you guys not expect to do as well I think my largest surprise over the weekend would obviously be the 1-1 uh with uh Madrid and uh Madrid and Mallorca I just didn't expect that I thought Madrid was going to come out hot especially after that win over Atalanta and just destroy and they really didn't so what'd you guys think uh what was your favorite result over the weekend and uh get in the comments see you guys in a new video peace